G'day football fans and welcome back to episode 24 of our Severe Rebuild here on Dylan on the Ball. Today it is the end of season 5. I, I, we've been here half a decade, doesn't that feel unreal? Feels weird to say. Today we're going to go through the game here against Las Palmas away in Gran Canaria as you see on your screen. And then after that game, I mean it's the end of the season so we are going to go through a bit of a recap a look through the squad what what may happen what may not happen in the future all that sort of stuff so before we get into it make sure you do leave us a big old like down below subscribe if you're new around here comment what you think of the video what you think of the series all that sort of stuff let me know now let's get into it the first thing we want to cover and i mean i mean you can't start anywhere else really you genuinely cannot start anywhere else when this when something is this good you cannot start anywhere else it is matthias tell of course his second season at the club First season wasn't, you know, fantastic. I mean, he was decent. If we go to his history here, his first season, he scored 18 goals for the club. His second season, 54. He's got 54 goals for the club going into today's fixture, so he will have scored more than he will play in this season. It's just absolutely sensational. He, he's been on an absolute tear. He cannot stop scoring. Seven goals in his last five appearances. We have just been so, so lucky. And I, I believe he's the top scorer. Like, if we go here, he's got 38 goals in 34 appearances. I'm pretty sure he's the top scorer by, like, 12 goals or something. But we'll get to that in just a tick. The second thing to cover is we have had a youth intake. Let's have a look at who we've brought in. So this year's youth intake was yet again an A-rated, I mean, it's, uh, as much as that's worth. It was an A-rated intake. We've got a Senegalese centre-back, Asan Diedhu, Didu, Didu. I don't know how to say it. I genuinely have no idea how to say that. He looks decent. I mean, obviously, he's got a lot of work to be doing. He's... Needs to put on a bit of muscle, clearly. Uh, he needs a bit of strength. Uh, he's, got, he's got work to do, but obviously excited to have another five-star prospect in the ranks. Secondly, we've got a holding midfielder, Santiago. I'm training him as a defensive midfielder, hoping that really he can add to what looks like what looks like decent mental attributes. Um, I mean, physical and technical have got definite work to do, but at the end of the day, he's 15, so he's got absolute decade on his time. To, to get any decent. We've then got a Grenadian goalkeeper named Bob Miles, which I don't, I didn't really think about. Like, it's just, it's, it is a bit weird, isn't it? Anyway, he looks probably fine. He might end up being the backup to Dennis Simon one day. Who knows? We then got Spanish forward here. I'm training him as an advanced forward. It is Julio Cesar, like the goalkeeper, the old Brazilian goalkeeper for Inter Milan. He looks, well, he looks okay. He's scoring well in uh, non competitive fixtures here for the under 19s. Obviously excited about the four-star potential, hoping he can continue to grow and, and turn into a, another Matthias Tell, hopefully. We've then got Fernando Pascual, a holding midfielder. We're training him as a central midfielder, sort of in the uh, the ilk of Wagner Van Anzio or, uh, or Fabio Moretti, I guess. Nothing, you know, too exciting, but I mean, he's 170 centimetres tall and he's got 16 headings, so that's good. Uh, we've then got Samuel Flores, midfielder. Uh, he's training as more of the, I guess, Oscar or Alberto Malero type midfielder. Um, looking very good, good teamwork, uh, good flair, good passing and finishing for a 16-year-old. For a Can't be too mad at that. Then we've also got some three-star people. Danny Russo here, who looks like a three-star potential guy. And then Carlos Romero, another Spanish youngster who, again, looks uh, probably okay. Uh, I don't guess we'll see. As for the competitions, though, I guess what we're all here to see, did we manage to haul in Real Madrid? The answer is no. Uh, we didn't manage to catch them. Uh, they're too good, basically. They still are, even though we've had an absolutely fantastic season. It has been our best season competing on all fronts, I'd say. We've managed to make the semi-final of the Champions League. We'll go to the fixtures shortly. It, it, we got knocked out in extra time at Liverpool after dominating the first leg. Uh, they then smashed us in the second leg and uh, won it in extra time, so it wasn't fun. We managed to win the Spanish Cup. That again was in extra time. We beat, I think it was Villarreal, thanks to a uh, Matiel Chortu goal in, in extra time. So I was pretty, I was really chuffed to see like a youth product that I signed and, and you know, have developed sort of by putting me out on loan, basically. Uh, score us a winning goal in a cup final. That was lovely. We then, as you know, I mean, it was in the last video, we got knocked out in the uh, Super Cup semi-final. One that we've never managed to crack, but, uh, you, you know, it is what it is. When you come up, like it, it, it ends up being us, Real Madrid, Barcelona, and one other. So we, it's, you know, we're never you know, too, too upset about that one. This is how the form has looked. April was an inconsistent month where we managed to lose 
to Arsenal. Real Madrid in, uh, drew in the second leg of the semi-final, which I guess was good because we had beaten them in the first. We then lost to Villarreal, drew with Getafe, and that was that was sort of when it really got away from us because, I mean, Real Madrid won the, their two fixtures there. That's an extra five points they got ahead of us. So it was over basically then. I mean, they've then gone, obviously, and on an absolute tear. We've been fantastic. I mean, this month we've scored, look, six against Espanyol, seven against Sporting Gijon, three against Valencia, four, five, and four. We've been scoring goals for absolute fun. If you look at the goal scorers, it's it's all around the park. We're having heaps and heaps of goal scorers. I will, of course, after the match, go through, you know, player performances throughout the season and all that. But you can see here, like, there's a lot of Matthijs Tell, a lot of Rooney Bargy has been very good as well, as you see here. So a lot of promising signs going into the next season. And, and the good thing about how young we are and, you know, the performances we have had from some young players like Rooney Bargy, Tell... Draugo, Moretti even, is uh, they'll be here for a number of years and they'll they'll probably continue to get better even. Anyway, that is enough of a, a setup. Let's get through to today's match before we do more of a recap after the fact because, I mean, I'm sure there'll be plenty to cover. So the lineup we're going with is a very, very strong one, basically going all out to try and, you know, get another three points. The best, we basically had the best goal scoring season we've ever had, close to the best defensive season we've ever had, almost the best points total as well. So, I mean, really, we would just want to get that one last win over the line, finish on the front foot and hopefully carry that into next season where, look, the start of the season's been the issue, really. The, the, the I don't know, second the first third of the season, no, maybe even first quarter of the season, and then the, the remaining 75% would be brilliant, so uh, we need to carry through some sort of momentum, and, and hopefully three points here on the final day can do that for us. Let's head through now to Gran Canaria. Doesn't it sound lovely to play football in Gran Canaria? That sounds absolutely sensational. Wouldn't mind it. We are, of course, versing a team that we have someone out on loan at, which is Jarlison Subero there, who's dropped out of the lineup, of course, because he can't play against his parent club. We'll go with the old pump fists, blah, 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 all of that stuff, you know, the drill. Anyway, um, it's a really boring final day, completely, to be completely honest with you. Um, uh, all the places are basically set, like we've, the, the top three are set, the bottom three are set. I mean, someone can grab the last Champions League spot. I mean, that's exciting. It's not us, but I mean, because we're second. Anyway, as we get started on this one, guys, make sure you do leave us a like, subscribe, comment, all the things. Anyway, there is the scene being set for us. Las Palmas down in, I think it was 15th, was it? I, I glanced at it barely. Anyway, getting underway here. We'll hit them with an encourage. It has been a very, very, uh, just that encouraging season. I mean, too, we've got to a Champions League semi-final to have beaten Liverpool. I think it was, did we beat him 5-2 in the first leg and then lost 6-2 in the second leg? It was an absolutely unreal time. We got through Arsenal well um we got through barcelona of course so it's uh it's been a very very good season to have made you know semi-final of the champions league to have made uh, won another spanish cup we got into the spanish managers hall of fame we're now 10th on that list equal with uh luis enrique um so it's been it's uh, really it's been a fantastic season it really is us and real madrid like that's it's just me versus carlo Ancelotti, and they just keep on winning it so that's, what, two seasons in a row they've won the league after we won it two seasons in a row. Here's a chance for Gakpo going through. Doesn't get a good connection on it, but that, you know, it's promising stuff. We'll hit them with the praise because we're playing well. We've got the shots. We've got the possession. Just need the final product, really. I think going into next season, we don't really need wholesale changes at all. I mean, we, we just need to carry on with this core because a lot of them are, you know, players that... If they're not coming into their prime, they're currently in them. Then we're not really don't really have many people who are over the over that hill anymore. After getting rid of uh, Lucas Campos and uh, John Jordan, you know players who are you know that side of their uh, that end of that, their careers. Um, we do have a couple of people out on loan that are looking very very good. There's a there's a Spanish attacking midfielder named Escarela or something. I can't remember how to pronounce it, but he's out on loan at uh, Osasuna, I think. We got him for two hundred and fifty thousand pounds uh which is tiny considering he's now worth like 40 million something we've also got like the Nash, the argentine first choice left back the colombian first choice left back is the the fellow that's on loan at las palmas uh, so we've got really promising future ahead of us just need to get to it and, and perhaps clear out a couple of players we'll we'll see um uh, i think the people on the chopping block might be those that left back might be or we'll see anyway uh, we're at half time here. Nothing really happened in that first half. We need to get through to this second half and get the three points on the line. On the line? On the uh, on the board. Just to, you know, finish the season off in the best way, really. Here's a highlight straight from half time though. Simicam playing it forward to 
a Drago, a Drago forward to Garcia. On the left, swings it in towards Tail. Goal. There it is. It's goal 55. Like, our old record in a season was 39. He scored 16 more. That's more than more than a third more than. Like, absolutely incredible. I don't know how it's come about that he's been this brilliant. Like, 39 goals is a very, very good season. Like, that's an unreal season. We sold a player for 85 million after he scored 39 in the season. This guy's got 55. What's, what's he going to be worth? I mean, we're not looking to sell him, obviously. He's got 55 goals for us. I don't want to sell that. Here's a corner. Gakpo with his 17 corners. Near post. It is Tanke Yonzu getting his 10th goal of the season. That is sensational. For a centre-back to score 10 goals in a season, that is absolutely unreal. A good corner from Gakpo towards the near post. Neonzu rises highest in a sea of yellow shirts and he uh, powers it past the keeper. 2-0, the second half turning out to be absolutely stunning from the start here. We will, I think, shortly look to bring on players like uh, Marimon and uh, Ella Jordu, like it's suggesting there. and You know, a bit more of a glimpse of the future, I guess. Maybe. Or, I don't know. Alright, 60 minutes in now. I will look to make those changes. Why dang not? Alright, we will... Oh, well, Rooney Bargy is not having the greatest game of his life. Um, we'll bring on, yeah, we'll bring on Marimon in his spot and play him. He likes to be an inverted winger, apparently. Uh, and then we'll bring on Elachor to a left wing. Uh, and why not finish off the season with a bit of, bit of Oscar? Oscar's been uh, out of sight. He's had an injury for about, I think he was out for about four weeks, which ended up meaning that he unfortunately missed the semi-final against Liverpool, which obviously we would have preferred to have him around if we could. Chance here for Las Palmas. Just outside the box. Good position for a free kick. We've only got three people in the wall for some reason. And he does exactly what you'd expect him to do. Powers it in near post, though. Beyond Dennis Simon for a great finish, really. I mean, it's a great free kick. There's, there's no chance for Dennis Simon if he stood in the middle of the goal for some reason. Right up where the spiders live. In off the bar. Um, but look, let's hit him with a nice little focus. Hopefully we can keep the three points going. Another highlight just a couple of minutes later, but it's not looking great. Uh, uh, they do throw that one out of the way, though. Hopefully we don't now throw it away ourselves. Simon with the ball. Forward for Oscar. We're looking to play out from the back, which usually ends up in we get to about halfway and then lob it over for Matthias Tell and he scores. Um, that sort of thing. Oscar now lobbing it over the top, but it's for Fran Garcia, who will get there. Gives it back to Ella Chortu. Well, okay, it's a red card. Okay, it wasn't a good highlight. It was a terrible highlight. A terrible tackle from Kyrian. Kyrian, whoever Kyrian is. I've never heard of him. Now I've heard of him as being an absolute menace. Getting a red card for hitting my little Maddie Ella Chortu. He's my boy. Don't anyone touch him. Uh, I will go into fight for Maddie Ella Chortu. Uh, all right, last change. Uh, let's, what do we do? Let's bring on Luis Enrique and then we'll put... Uh, Marimon in the center because I think Marimon's probably a bit better off in the center and uh, Luis Enrique is a lovely little winger. He's been, you know, he's been at the club a couple of seasons now. I've, I've just been absolutely over the moon with him. Very much hoping we can keep hold of this. I mean, the main, I guess, part of this video is yet to come. I mean, we're going to do the, the season wrap up and the, you know, what the squad's looking like, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I do want to finish the finish the season with three points that would be the ideal scenario very sorry if you can hear someone in the background doing some work on the backyard it's pissing me off man he's in his backyard hammering some stuff like it's like he's hammering uh, pegs like metal pegs into the ground for something i don't know it's, i'm going mad though another highlight here it's tanga neon zoo through for matthias tell oh my days marimon marimon gets his third goal of the season there was a that shot from matthias tell was absolutely sensational it was well, how far out was he? 30 yards? 35 yards? I don't know. Played forward from Tange Nyonzu. Brings it forward very well. He's been sensational this season. Then Matthias Tell from 30 odd yards out. Off the bar. Marimon, the quickest to react. First one there. And he pops it into the, I mean, an almost empty net to put us up. 3-1. A good end to the season, really. I mean, a, a decently comprehensive victory over Las Palmas. I mean, assuming they don't come back in the remaining four minutes, but uh, I'm, I'm, I feel pretty pretty safe. The, I like the pass map. That looks nice. Almost a, almost symmetrical. It'd be good if bloody Luis Enrique could pop out the side a bit. Anyway, that is three points in the bag to finish off season number five. Let's head to the season wrap-up. The, the What is it? Season review? What's it called? I can't remember. Season review? I don't know. That thing. All right, so here we are. We are at the end of season review. I think Real Madrid did win their last fixture and ended up on 100 points, which is 
just annoying, isn't it? It's just annoying. Looking at the new arrivals, of course, Cody Gakpo came in on a free transfer. He's ended up with 35 goal involvement, 17 goals, 18 assists. That is absolutely just unreal. Just ridiculous, ridiculous statistics for his first season in the league for a free transfer. He's now, I think, I'm not sure if it'll still have it, but uh, yeah, he's been wanted by some bigger clubs like Real Madrid want him. Uh, Arsenal were wanting him, it says West Ham, and I think Tottenham were in for a little bit, so if we make a 70 million profit for him, I'm not going to be too upset. Fabio Moretti as well has been sensational, 7.2 rating, I mean, the, the midfield pairing of him alongside Adriago has been just unreal, we've been so, I've like, so, so happy with it, and I think it really can be, you know, something for a number of years with them at the base, you know, with Matthijs Tell, Bargi, El Chortu, you know, Marymount, all that sort of stuff. Wisdom Amy as well, in this season, he's been fantastic, it's a high transfer fee for him, of course, of 53 million, which they weren't too pleased with, but he's turning out to be very, very good, and he's only 21, so he will get just better and better. Wagner Venencio, of course, he's been fantastic as well, coming in really the second half of the season after going back on loan to uh, Flamengo. Again, another player that I'm just absolutely just over the moon with to, I mean, he's still, I think it's down as a uh, mercenary. Yeah, he's still down as a mercenary. He's now started playing for Brazil. He's got himself a second contract, like after only signing for the club, you know, sometime through last year, I guess, uh, before being loaned back to his parent club. He's come in, started playing for us, got himself a new contract, signed playing for Brazil. He looks very, very good, doesn't he? Valentin Gendry, he came in, of course, halfway through the season after he sold uh, Alejandro Pozzo. He's been very good. I mean, I'm happy enough with him. I mean, he's a backup to Wisdom Amy, really, uh, and, you know, he's, he's, he's fine. He, he doesn't have to be better than a B. He doesn't have to be better than a 6.9. He just has to play a little bit. We then got Nabi Suma. Uh, look, I don't really think too much about him. I, I'd really like him to go out on loan. Um, nobody would come in for him. Um, and then he was out for the African Cup of Nations through January, so he didn't have a chance to play then. And then through the second half of the season, we were trying to catch up on teams. So didn't get him much time there either. As for the season results, we've got a C plus for our finish in the Champions League, which seems ridiculous because we... Look, we're well ahead of, uh, like, even considering not making Champions League, which Almeria have made somehow. Uh, and it, it was only two games ago that Real Madrid sealed their title, which seems ridiculous. Matthijs Tell getting 39 goals is ridiculous. Again, you would say that really the start of the season here against those four teams, Madrid, Barcelona, the other Madrid, and Batiste, that we gave them a lot of ground and we were always playing catch up and we couldn't really because 100 points is a lot of points. Champions League, A minus, we almost made it. 5 2 and then 5 2, but then it was uh, in extra time that Liverpool scored again to send them through to the final, which I think is yet to be played. You can see it's again Matthijs Tell with 14 goals, so 39 there, 14 there, ridiculous. We've won the Spanish Cup. Again, it was a nil all. We won in extra time thanks to Mattia Lachortu. It was a really a horrid goal. Um, losing 1-0 to Real Madrid, don't really care about it. it. It is what it is. Moments to remember. Bigs win. We've had a couple of games where we've scored seven this week, this week, this year, but uh, the one against Aris is the one that they are pointing us to with, uh, what's that, four goals from Matthijs Tell. You love to see it. Match to remember, of course, is beating Real Madrid. We were then at that point within one point of them. Second half of the season didn't quite go to plan. From there, a nice 90th minute winner from Oscar, of course. Goal of the season, very, very recently, only, you know, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, something like that, was Rudy Bargi. We will, of course, go and watch this one. Why not? So it was only in the fourth, 14th minute, rather. You can see him making an absolute, just mazy, long, long run, finishing in off the bar. It was beautiful stuff. We managed to win that one 4-1, a hat-trick at the end of the day from Matthijs Tell. See, it's an assist for Simakan, so he's just passed it a little bit out to Baji, and Baji's done the rest. As for the finances, it says we got less broadcast revenue, which I don't really understand, because surely, surely having made it two stages further in the Champions League, like we would have made more money, you think? Anyway, it makes more sense that we've got more competition money and more corporate match day well, sort of stuff. Sponsorship getting up by 10 million is absolutely unreal. Yeah, very happy with that. Even though it says no new deals, don't really understand. Reputation hasn't changed, which I don't really understand. How we lined up, the best team of the season. It is exactly really what you'd expect after a great season from Gakpo, great season with Baji. The best backline we had this season. Simakan, of course, missing a lot of the season with uh, he broke his ribs and I think there was a you know, groin or a hip injury or something. I can't really remember, but the only thing, a glaring, it's really 
ticking me off that Fran Garcia is 0.5 away from also being yellow. And oh, that would have been good to have the whole team being yellow. 7.53 average rating for Matthijs Tell, who in 53 appearances has contributed, what, 66 goal involvements? That is sublime. That is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, he cost us £40 million and he's done that. That's just silly accolades. We've got three Manager of the Month awards. We've got, I think... Uh, someone won an award. Yeah, Spanish Young Player of the Year was a Draugo. We've then got Spanish League Player of the Year and top goal scorer, of course, with Matthijs Tell. He's scored 55 goals, which is the most overall, the most league goals, the most goals in a match, the most goals in a league match, most assists in a season was Gakpo, which I'm sure Rooney Baji was around that mark or even above that. I'm not sure. We've got the most clean sheets we ever have uh, across our five years, which was set by Yasin Bunu, I think, only two years ago or so with uh, 24. So just beaten that. Uh, most player of the match, I think that's actually equal with someone else. I can't actually remember. Maybe Rafa Mir or something. I can't remember. Anyway, history in the making. We Why is it showing us a nil-all draw? That's annoying. Anyway, we managed to win ourselves a cup we finished second in the league of course behind only real madrid bastards um we made the champions league semi-final it's been a great season i hate this timeline thing but look it's it's getting pretty lengthy now um the thing i do you know i guess value the most potentially is We've been inducted into the Hall of Fame, as I was saying before. Um, we've also got a bunch of people who are in the next gen uh, top 50 thing that comes out. Um, I will finish this now. We'll go through. Let's have a look at the squad. Nope, squad, squad. Um, looking at who performed well, of course, Matthijs Tell, then Cody Gakpo, who, as we saw, is wanted by West Ham and Real Madrid. A Drago, of course, again, absolutely brilliant, worth an absolute ton. Don't want to sell him, never want to sell him. Rooney Bardi wanted by Leipzig. He was also wanted recently by someone else. Like, I think he was wanted by Arsenal too. I can't remember, but one of them's managers has been uh, coming and watching our games, which is nice for him, I suppose. Neonzu wanted by Arsenal, which I don't think I want to let go of him. Callum Window wanted by Wolfsburg, which, you know, he did end up scoring 18 goals, which is pretty sensational. Looking at the goal scorers, though, I was talking a lot about uh, replacing goals of people like uh, Lucas Campos, who left us and uh, how other players would need to step up. We really have had that with Gakpo coming in with 17 goals, Rudy Bardi coming in with 14 and 12. We've had, what, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven players scoring double-figure goals, which is sensational. Assists, Rudy Bardi and Gakpo both getting 18. Five players getting 10 assists or more, a couple more on nine. Look, it's been a very, very good season, a very, very promising season. As for players who might end up moving on, Oscar is still around. Fran Beltran didn't really get much of a look in this season. We might end up looking to cash in on him. Same with Inyaki Pena, because we do have uh, another goalkeeper in the squad who's just been sitting here, and he's trained by the club. He's not very good. Uh, that's the only thing, uh, which I'm a little bit scared by. But end of the day, uh, look, uh, Pena only played, what, six games? I think that was because uh, there was cup games that I played him in, and then... Uh, Dennis Simon got the flu so you know he, uh, Dennis Simon ends up playing an absolute ton uh, as you see where is he at 55 games for Dennis Simon goodness me that's a lot of football we then look at players like uh, Kuenka who you know he definitely has a ceiling we might look to cash in on him Fran Garcia has been wanted previously by clubs like Tottenham and uh, Juventus I think I can't remember but they came in for him he might be one that we look to move on because we do have players coming through that will be better than him basically um, if we go to our development center and look at our loans some of these players are coming through are going to be absolutely brilliant like Javier he's 17 he's going to be a sensational midfielder so when I mean I don't even know I mean when we move Fran Beltran on this guy might play a bit I don't know uh, he's been brilliant in the I think that's the third tier of Spanish football we've then got players like Alexander Alexandre I don't know how to say it he's 19 he's starting to look sensational if we look at him even as a forward he'd be brilliant he looks very very good he's playing in the second division and he's almost average a seven so that's positive signs Ari Lacosta another holding midfield prospect again starting to look very very good isn't he the only issue is that I think it was him uh, if we look at his form He's been playing a lot of attacking mid, which I don't understand. Like, if we if we look at him again, 15 tackling, 13 marking. He's got good anticipation and aggression and concentration. Why are you playing him in attack? Like, I guess he's got good vision, but... Come on, mate. What are you doing? He'd be playing for the national side if he's back there. Bloody hell. We've then got 
Uh, left back Enzo Rodriguez. Uh, he's one that, uh, as I was saying, if someone comes in for Fran Garcia or Miguel Gutierrez, we've got this guy waiting in the wings, ready to go. He looks very, very good. Good fitness, good stamina, good work rate. Decent pace. He's only 19. He's played five times for Argentina already. He's going to be sensational. Raymond Escarela, he looks brilliant. He's worth 47 to 67 million. He is just absolutely ridiculous. He's played in the second tier. He's almost had a seven rating. He's only 18. He's going to be absolutely brilliant. He looks almost better than Oscar Marimon. Like 15 free kick taking, 15 finishing, 15 vision, termination, flair are good. And man, we are. And the crazy thing is, like, we. He's not from our academy. Uh, I just brought him in for £250,000, pound, it was. Um, because that was his release clause. And he's this dang good. We've then also got uh, other players. Uh, Jame, uh, he's a right back who looks decent. He's been on, in the second tier. He's only uh, had half a season there. where he's, he's been decent. He'll probably go out on loan again next season and then maybe the season after that we'll look at uh, him taking the place of Valentin Gendry. A bit further down the list. Doesn't look great but I mean Jarlison Sabero is 19. He's played six times for Colombia. He's played in the first division this year playing 32 games. So that's very good signs for the future that like uh, he's considered to be that good of a prospect that he can play in the, the first division already. Looks very good. Again, good stamina, good work rate. Pace is good. Defending looks decent. Could work on his crossing, obviously, but I don't really mind that at this stage. He's 19, of course. Uh, looking at, if we go to, like, the under-19s and look at the potential of some of these players, we look at, again, players like an Astricky, he's been out on loan. The growth isn't quite what you'd like it to be. Maybe next season he'll go somewhere a bit better than Ali, Ali Canty. I don't know how to say that. Uh, fingers crossed though he, he just continues to grow we've got a few players whose their potentials dropped a bit like this fella came in with five star potential he does still look like he will be decent he did score six goals in the second division but oh, he does need to get a bit of a move on to to start looking like he'll actually play for the first team looking at the b squad if we again oh, where's their why is their potential not there let's if you look at their potential just sains who wants to leave actually because uh, he ended up getting fined for missing training, um, but blamed me for some reason and got angry at me, even though it's like it's, he's on in the B team, they'd probably have the same code of conduct as us, I guess, but he, he got angry at me and now he wants to leave, but I'm not budging from his, um, he's got four star potential, I'm not budging from his release cause, because why would I? Uh, looking at the C squad as well, a bunch of other like five star potential people, Carmona, uh, who, who's 18 now, needs to definitely get a move on with the tech Technicals, but his physicals and mental do look quite good. Sedano, he's won that. Did he just come in, in this intake? Oh, I can't remember, but he looks pretty good to me. Uh, and then Car uh, Carmona, who came in a couple of years ago, last year, maybe? I can't remember, but he looks very good. That's all, I'll, that's all I know. Again, technicals need working, like finishing, crossing, passing. The, the sort of, you know, core things of the game, but he's played in the C squad and he's scored 15 goals this season, so I can't be... I guess too mad a lot of uh, any transfers that we do next season will really depend on who goes if people go if people get bored we'll we'll assess what you know young players we have coming through and and what we might need looking forward but at the end of the day with a lot of our squad being quite young like key players like Venancio who's played 29 games already uh, Adriago starting most games Simon Baji, Matthijs Tell, of course, being only 22. Uh, a, a lot of the core of our squad are very, very young still, so they will, you know, grow and grow and grow and, and stick together and, and the best is yet to come, hopefully. So, fingers crossed that's next season. We can go one further in the Champions League or catch Real Madrid, one of those things, maybe both, who knows. I hope you'll stick around for it, though. Thank you guys very, very much for watching this one. Make sure you leave us a like down below. Subscribe if you're new. Comment what you thought of it. You must have liked something if you just stuck around this long. So make sure you do leave us that like. And until next time, when we go again in season, what, what is it? Season six? Oh my God. Peace.